Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to talk about making realistic graphs for things like architectural visualization or any kind of render really. And I'm going to talk about the add-on Scatter. So yes, this is a half-sponsored video from the people that created Scatter, but hopefully it'll be informative and you can go through the process of creating graphs without this add-on, which I'll explain. So as always, the links will be in the description for both the add-on and other helpful videos that I mention. So first of all, how do we make graphs? Well, one of my previous tutorials, which I talk about making low poly graphs, uses simple planes. It creates a nice effect, but it does have its limitations. And shortly I'll go into how you can use the same techniques for creating more detailed and realistic graphs. But first of all, we need to study graphs and understand it slightly in order to recreate it. So with a lot of the time I see beginners making grass that looks a bit like this. Now this is very flat and it looks very artificial. It's not bad, but it doesn't look particularly real. The reason it looks flat and without character is that it's using the same object over and over. And yes, there are slight patches, even though it's different rotations and in places different sizes, it still looks very flat and uniform across the image. Here we have an actual image of grass and you can see there's huge variations within the grass itself. So we've got a clump of taller grass here and much shorter areas here. We've got patches where there's no grass. So if we are to recreate this, we would probably need three different grass models that we replicate over and over and we clump them together. You may even want to add weeds, as you can see in the areas up here, which can give it that extra authenticity and character. Certainly in some grasses, like meadows and things, you'll want flowering weeds like this, dandelions and daisies. And again, you can see the different types of grass in here, clumping together, short, different colors, weeds. So in order to make something similar in Blender, we would need several models to do this. Now my low poly technique works fairly well for meadowy type grass like this, where we're just using alphaed image planes and we pile them on top of each other. But if you ever need to get a bit more close to the grass, then you'll certainly need some actual models. You may even want some scattered leaves in there as well. So if you haven't already, then take a look at my beginners tutorial about making grass. And I do it in a nice simple way where I make these transparent planes and then I spread them around with a particle system. So you can see in the particle system settings, I've got four different types of grass and I just spread them across this plane. And to speed up performance, I've set the display amount to much lower than the actual rendered amount. That's why it looks a bit sparse at the moment. But when they all come together, it can look quite nice. But you can certainly see limitations to this. Firstly, when they're seen from the side, they tend to disappear. And if you go in too close, you can see that inaccuracy. So what do we need to do instead of this if we want realistic grass that we can get close to? Well, you'll need to make different models that look like this. So taking one strand of grass, duplicating it, twisting it, bending it, adding a nice material, and then repeating that lots of different times to get your different clumps of grass. So thin ones, thick ones, tall ones, and short ones, each time varying the colors to add a bit of variation. If you want to put weeds in here, you'll need to make those as well. So of course, this is quite a time consuming thing. And that's why I'm talking to you today about scatter. If you are doing any sort of architectural visualization and you want to get into that field, then you'll need some sort of add-on like this, in my opinion. I'll quickly show you what it does. So I'll move around my scene and you can see the house in the background and this grass plane with a very simple texture on it. I can go up to my biomes manager and that will give me lots of options of grasses that I can click on one, click on the play button here and see them all appear. Now I've got it set to safe mode just because my computer's a little bit old and maybe a bit of a potato and I can come in and make them all visible. And I'll just close this down and I'll show you that I've also got this set to proxies mode, which is another great feature within Scatter. So I've got great viewport control and I can move around, get the idea of where my grass is going to sit. When I go across the rendered mode, I then get to see my actual grass. Now I don't have to go in and set each of these individually. I can select them all if I want to tweak them. And then I've got a display setting here. So I've got it set at 43%. I can try and kill my computer and turn it up and press the batch button and it's not doing too badly. I'll turn that back down for now just so it doesn't completely die. And this is something you'll need to bear in mind and they have considered when making this program. 
Using things like the proxy mode means that if you've got a slower computer yet you still want to do architectural visualizations, you can set up your grass and it will only really show when it goes to rendered mode. And you don't have to go through all the settings tweaking and tweaking for hours, waiting for renders to happen because you've already got these presets available to you. I'll go back to rendered mode and you can see all the different options here that I can change. So the scale, the amount and so forth. And hopefully that's fairly obvious to you what that does. But the great thing is it will update for all of them or I can select on just one and have it update for just that one. Now there's a lot of great features in here and it'll take too long to go through all of them. But it's also worth saying, you don't actually have to stick to these biomes. You can adapt them, create your own. So let's say I didn't want these three, I can just delete them. And I can create new presets by selecting that floor and selecting one of the grasses, selecting one of these presets and pressing scatter. And you can see that new one appear there. And again, I've got that safety mode on so I can now see the results of that there. It doesn't have to be grasses, you can do this for any items. You could do it for things like rocks and pebbles. And it really is so much faster and easier to work with than the particle systems. It also has that proxy mode if you need to use it. So I've gone for a slightly different one this time to show another feature. If I add in a curve, and let's say I'm creating a path down here. Now if I select all my objects and then come down to the new Boolean on selected systems, you can see it create a pathway and kind of cut out those particles. There's also things like camera clipping, so I look through my camera and set up clipping. There really is a great deal to offer from this add-on, so if you want to save a ton of time and you want to get into that architectural visualization or you're creating big scenes with lots of scattered objects, then this really is the add-on for you. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.